Disneyland is your land. <laughs> Come seek an adventure at the old pirates, eh? Make the jump to life, Hi, folks. Welcome to the Disneyland Beat, where our toes tap to a Disneyland drum. And we always whistle while we work. I'm Amy. And I'm TC. Disney has released some more details about the backstory around Tiana's Bayou Adventure, the ride that is replacing Splash Mountain in both U.S. Magic Kingdoms. And the reactions people are having in the comments are kind of cracking us up. Gonna love them. But let's get some context here. First, let's consider why and how Imagineers craft backstories for attractions. Some animated movie-based rides are just a simple retelling of some portion of that story. Ariel's Undersea Adventures, Pinocchio's Daring Journey, Peter Pan's Flight. But some rides, usually the larger, more expensive, and in our opinion, often better rides, the e-ticket attractions, get many layers of original backstory that peel like an onion in order to help justify the existence of something fantastic, believably, in a tangible real world. Look at Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. The story of the ride couldn't be simpler. It's pretty much nonsense, but it still has a nice layered backstory that fits within the already nuanced backstory of Mickey's Toontown. Did you know it has a specific year, 1930, that Mickey moved in, and it's a specific suburb of LA, and Mickey chose the suburbs to keep with his Midwestern roots. The new attraction in the land worked to incorporate all of Mickey and Pal's actual cartoon works into an actual place, making a believable location where they could have been creating all these cartoons. Think about the fables and the legends upon myth upon legends that make up the backstory of Haunted Mansion. It's been expanded over the years by park signage, special releases, collector's items, games, all sorts of things, sometimes contradicting itself even. The Galaxy's Edge backstory is so detailed it's beyond tedious, listing all the names of the shopkeepers, equipment, droids, animals, starbase events, and more that make up the reasons why it looks the way it does and why there are things to do is a massive amount of copious information. But this is how you world build. You layer detail on detail. And that's totally what the Disneyland Imagineers are doing here. And to be honest, we truly think they're building a food brand. One that will either be available at the parks exclusively, or more likely and more profitable, will soon be on the gourmet shelf at your local grocer. Okay. We're going to read the new Tiana's Foods backstory that Disney has provided, and then we're going to share some funny comments that have been written. But let's preface this. The backstory you are about to hear is not what the ride experience is going to be like word for word. It's just another layer deep in the onion that will make the attraction experience fuller, richer, and more meaningful. Okay, Disney writes... At a young age, Tiana developed a deep passion for cooking and began to dream of one day owning her own business. Her father, James, taught her that good food brings folks together. One of the most exciting parts of Tiana's Bayou Adventure is that we're going to see where Tiana's life has taken her following the success of Tiana's Palace, a restaurant she had dreamed of owning and worked so hard to make come true. Walt Disney Imagineering is creating an original next chapter story for Tiana. Within the attraction queue, guests will discover that she continues to grow her business with Tiana's Foods, an employee-owned cooperative. Combining her talents with those of the local community, Tiana has transformed an aging salt mine and built a beloved brand. The endeavor began when Tiana purchased the salt mine and the area surrounding the large salt dome that it operated from. With the help of her mother Eudora, Nuveen, Louis, and other owners of the cooperative, Tiana revived the old salt mine in the surrounding land, growing a wide array of vegetables, herbs, and spices for her recipes. This multifaceted enterprise has turned the aging salt mine into a space that has come alive. Complete with a boutique farm and both a working and teaching kitchen, Tiana's Foods is where Tiana and her colleagues create all sorts of new products that they are bringing to the world, including a line of original hot sauces. Tiana wants to give a big thanks to her family and friends and the entire community for all the support they've given her by throwing an amazing party during Mardi Gras season. When it turns out there's been a bit of a mix-up with the party preparations, Tiana invites us to meet her at Tiana's Foods to help with the missing ingredient for the party. When we arrive, we may see that Tiana spruced up the company's facilities with vibrant art from local artists. 
Food for the party is being prepared and beignets are being loaded into crates for the celebration. All kinds of preparations are underway for the journey into the bayou with Tiana, along with new and familiar friends from the animated film. Picking up where that story left off, Tiana continues bringing people together with Tiana's Foods, another treasured meeting place to spend time together and celebrate a diverse community. Tiana is also working with cooperative members to teach gardening and cooking to children of all ages and inspiring other women to run successful businesses as the brand grows nationwide. Okay, so we in no way think this means that the ride will strictly be about her new business, though we concede some of these things might be in there. Some things we already know about the ride is it will feature Louie, a giant alligator playing a trumpet, as well as an all-critter jug band and a Mama Odie section on the lift hill. We also think there's going to be plenty of fantasy on the ride as well, just that this particular chunk of backstory being released is more focused on connecting the princess and the frog to the real world in particular New Orleans Square, and giving her a new chapter, one we are likely to see much more of in the upcoming Disney Plus series. But some have read this backstory and assumed it will be the scenes of the new ride. Bishop writes, Is there a section on the ride where Tiana has to visit the permitting office and fill out the proper tax forms? That could be exciting. Could this ride be any more tedious? LOL. Stephanie considered another angle. She wrote, Someone has been watching the Gaineses and their Magnolia Enterprise for a story script. Joanna and Chip's life to a T. We should call the ride Magnolia Express. This had the opportunity to be so creative and magical. Our kids aren't interested in HGTV for a ride and neither am I, Disney. Keith wonders, We're getting a lesson on small business distribution? And while these are funny, some others caught some much more interesting details. The new ride is really infusing itself with a Louisiana backstory. Many readers know that salt mining is a major industry in the area, and major hot sauce brand Tabasco has a large abandoned salt mine and dome near its factory on Avery Island. And that area also has acres and acres of gorgeous gardens fading into the bayou. Having that much salt is a major part of being a spice factory, so it kind of all makes sense. And details build the world. We learn all about spice in Star Wars. Each series brings us new details. This is an amount of information we can handle. And they can keep a beignet scene. I'm cool with that. And we're happy to see that this is not a simple retelling of the movie that we all know and love, but rather a new chapter, a new adventure, and it looks to be a pretty classy one. And those of us lucky enough to have Disneyland and New Orleans Square as part of our home park should find some good news in this. Disneyland in the 90s might have decided to turn the French market into a meet and greet character lunch and splash Mountain into the greatest hits of the movie. But in doing so, it would have changed New Orleans Square beyond recognition. We see this as Disney Imagineer's way of incorporating Tiana and all of her friends into New Orleans Square in a way that will respect and preserve what New Orleans Square is all about on a fundamental level, which in the long run really seems like the way to go. We're excited about it and we hope it's a lot of fun. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for joining us. May the light in the firehouse window always shine brightly and may your dreams always come true. See you real soon, Mouseketeers. Analyst, I'm a